the PNI clubs will have something to add to what you said. In the meantime, we have Francesco Sicardi, who is going to entertain us on something which is, you just gently touched upon it, the liability of classification society. Francesco, you know you have seven minutes. Six. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Jacobson has just mentioned a number of points which would support some of the questions which I will put on this subject, which I decided to take because there has been a trend in the recent years uh, whereby more and more claims have been advanced against classification societies, which is in fact part of a more general trend whereby uh, victims of uh, shipping casualties have tried to involve as much as potential uh, targets as possible to maximize the possibility of recovery. Uh, there is also another reason that the class societies have extended the scope of their services from the historical service, we can see that here, class, which would then uh, give rise to relationships with the ship owner to statutory certification, which uh, gives rise to a sort of triangular uh, relationships, uh, ship owner, flag state, and the class of society, which in that function is called, at least at European level, recognized organization. Uh, and more. There is industrial certification and other ancillary services. Now, uh, against this background of uh, activities, the class societies may face claims from a number of people. In contract, certainly from the owner and the flag state, because as we have seen, there is this triangular uh, relationships. There is a privity of contract in tort, and possibly also outside tort, as we shall see in a moment, from third-party users, because they may say that they have relied upon the certification or the representation made by the class society about the conditions of the ship. So you will see insurers, subrogated insurers, charters, passengers, cargo owners, ship buyers, pollution victims as in the case of the ERICA. The basis of that liability, as we have just seen, is in contract, in principle, in that first case, in tort, in the second case. But I have added another situation, let's call it, which is contract with protective effects for third parties. This is the situation where a party who is not in a privative contract relationships with, with class uh, claims to have the right to, mm, let's say, uh, mm, mm, rely upon certain of the rights arising from the contract because of the proximity between the two parties, the class and this third. This is a theory which has been developed in other fields. For example, in the medical practice, accountancy services, financial advisors, uh, a party who buys stocks based on a financial advisor's accounting or auditing of a, of a stock company may try to rely upon this kind of relationships. There is, of course, the criminal liability, which would, of course, not touch upon the company as such, but the surveyors, the individual surveyors, and this, as far as the corporation is concerned, in Italy, but also in other countries, there is the so-called administrative liability, uh, which is a sort of criminal for corporation liability, so-called, uh, sanctions of which is, of course, not prison, but sanctions like suspension of activity, fines, and so forth. Uh, now, what are the responses or the, which the class of societies give to that? Uh, I have listed four possible. One is sovereign immunity, and we'll touch very briefly upon that. The other one is to deny liability. 
The third one is to incorporate into, those con into the their contracts exculpatory clauses or limitation of liability clauses. And the last one, but this is only to be, not now, as we shall see, statutory limitation, limitation by law. Sovereign immunity, I just, very briefly, uh, because this is what happened in the case of the Erika and in another recent case in Italy by a court of Genoa, is the situation whereby the class society acting as a delegate of a state can enjoy the protection which the state enjoys because it is the delegate. What does this protection mean, in fact? Two things. One, it can be sued only before the courts of that state. So if uh, RINA, because RINA was uh, on the floor uh, a while ago, is acting on behalf of the Panama state and it makes something wrong, it should in principle be sued before the courts of Panama, not the courts of Italy or of the place where the wrong was committed or the damage was suffered. Second, it can avail of the same defenses. So it's not impunity. It's not impunity. And what is the basis of sovereign immunity? What just I said, the administration have the responsibility over the jurisdiction of their vessels. They have to ensure that the vessels are safe. They have to survey the vessels. They can delegate these functions to the recognized organization or class societies. In delegating that, they delegate the sovereign immunity, or rather the sovereign function, and as a consequence, the sovereign immunity. This is a list of cases where either the sovereign immunity, like in the Sundancer, but this was a special case, or the uh, public function has been ruled by court. There are Italian courts, for example, the third and fourth. And cases where the immunity itself has been uh, adjudged in favor of the class society, which is the Court of Appeal of Paris in the Erica, the Court of Cassation in the Erica, although on this point there are conflicting views whether the Cassation has affirmed the Court of Appeal or not, the Italian Court of Genoa in the case which I have just mentioned. But since sovereign immunity is not non-liability, it's not impunity, the liability remains a problem. Are the class societies accountable for what they do if they do something wrong? Towards whom? For what kind of damage? Uh, there is here, as many of the lawyers present know, a difference of view between the common law system, although things are changing in my perception uh, from the Nicholas, the famous Nicholas H, between the common law's view, uh, court's view, or the case law, uh, which tend to take a position whereby uh, class society should not be pursued unless in very special circumstances. And this is a list, one, two, three, and four, of the main or some of the main arguments which have been used by courts in common law countries to uh, come to that result. Whilst the civil law country have taken a more, much more stringent uh, uh, view, they have repeatedly said that the class societies are accountable for uh, either non-performance in case of contract or wrong if it is a tort, misrepresentation in case of presentation, wrong presentation of the conditions of a ship. Uh, then the other problem is uh, whether and to what extent uh, the society have to answer for damages. Uh, on this point, uh, the question of liability and exclusion clauses arises. Uh, the exclusion clauses are normally contained in general terms and conditions which the society incorporate in their contracts. The problem arises here whether, of course, uh, such exculpatory or limitation clauses can be opposed to third parties who do not have a private, privative contract 
relationship with the classification society? Well, in, in, in principle, they cannot. But if a party would try to rely upon the so-called protective effect of the contract, then a class society might be in a position to oppose the limitation or exculpatory clause. But the exculpatory clauses and limitation clauses have a limit in themselves. The limits are in number two. Exclusion clauses cannot be enforced under many laws in case of willful misconduct. Uh, sorry, there is willful conduct, but of course it should be willful misconduct or gross negligence. And they are normally not uh, available in case of claim for loss of life and physical injury because this is considered to be against public policy. Uh, there is a point which I mentioned here very briefly. I don't know whether I'm, I've already exhausted or not. I have? I have. Then in, in, in the relationship between uh, states and class societies, uh, as recognized organization, there is a limitation in the EU directive which uh, at present regulates their relationships, which is 2009. Finally, uh, statutory limitation. I have listed here four uh, conventions uh, which uh, cover limitation of liability uh, in various fields, always shipping field, of course. Egevisby and Rotterdam rules is carriage of, of, of cargo. Uh, limitation of liability for maritime claims is, is the LMC, the General Ship Owners Limitation. Civil Liability Convention is the convention mentioned by uh, Mons. Uh, and I have put the, those who, under those convention, can avail themselves of limitation. Uh, available for, in the Ego Visby, servants or agents of the carrier. In the Rotterdam rules, the carrier, the master and crew, the employee of the carrier, any other party performing the obligation. In the 1976-1996, the owner, charter, ship owner, salvor, any person for whose act, neglect, or default, they are responsible. It doesn't appear that the class societies are included in those lists. The problem regarding CLC is different. Uh, we have heard uh, Mons saying that Rina uh, wrongly was considered to be in. I have another view, but I don't discuss that. I may accept that even in that case, class society may not be included. And then why they should not be included? Why all the other major players in a shipping activity and in a shipping casualty can limit why the class society should not? This is a question of which I leave to the audience. Thank you. Grazie, Francesco. Thank you very much, Francesco. So the fil rouge of uh, some of the speeches. Uh